So with regard to that, what you're really talking about are stories. And in the book, you make the point that sometimes we're listening to the wrong stories. We're listening to the stories that say all of this effort will result in A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever it happens to be. You have done an amazing job and interviewed an incredibly wide spectrum of people, and you've heard the alternative stories. Um, there's a particular story about Roz Savage that you, you mentioned in the book. Tell us a bit more about that and, and tell us about how we can learn to listen to more than just the single point of view stories. So uh, Roz Savage is an ocean rower who has rowed, I think she's the first woman to row solo across three oceans. And I was really struck when I was talking to her about these concepts uh, and, and about the book that she said, you know, she'd had a real... Uh, you know, one of those moments recently that had really made her stop and think, but she was listening to the radio. And of course, she herself, she's a speaker. Um, she's spoken all over the world. She's taught at Yale um, and, and will recount, you know, the, the journeys that she's gone, what she's learned, the lessons she's learned from, uh, from all of these incredible adventures she's had. But she was listening to the radio and there was an interview with an immigrant um, and they were actually talking about the absolutely perilous journey that they had been on in boats that are incredibly rickety, um, you know, and there's, there's, no, there's no GPS, there's nobody helping you. Actually, none of the things that she had in her really well-prepared ocean-going boat, it was pretty small, but actually it had all the latest gear. She had support at the other end of the radio. Uh, and this journey that an immigrant had gone on a rickety boat, she thought was actually far more compelling in terms of resilience, the stories, you know, the, the bravery, the challenges that they had faced. And yet that immigrant arrives, is chucked in a detention center. No one invites them to talk on a stage about their resilience, about the stories that they have to tell of crossing the channel mm -hmm. or the Mediterranean or whatever it might be. Rod Savage, yeah, oh, we like that story of crossing the ocean. That's a comfortable one to listen to. So we'll have her come and talk at conferences and inspire us all. And yet, you know, as she said, actually, you know, which of these two stories has more bravery involved and probably even more learning if we were able to listen to it. So we have very set ways of the stories we want to listen to and we think we should listen to and the ones we don't. And, you know, I've always really struggled with that narrative that, you know, Olympians get brought into school assemblies and they'll say, oh, I had a few difficulties along the way, but here you go, I've got a medal. As if life is like that, as if it's a little bit difficult and then we all win a medal. And if you don't, then maybe that's a bad thing to, you know, hundreds of children when actually all of these competitions are set up where only a few people ever do win the medals. So, you know, we're by, by, by deliberation, we are creating um, a world where we're saying you, basically most of you won't succeed. Um, that's madness because there's more than one way. And, you know, the stories in sport don't just come from the person who comes first. Often there are great things that have happened within a race and others have made it a great race. The tactics, the decisions, the risks that people have taken that maybe didn't pay out but they made it such a fascinating race and we miss that because we just look at what happened at the end we really need to open our eyes to more 